Hello and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. We've been talking about the intervals between notes and I've also been changing it up a little and showing some other things, but today I want to focus on it. And what I've done is I have written music, and I've mentioned this before, for every single interval from one half step up to an octave. I haven't gone beyond an octave because I don't think that's necessary. And the reason I want you to understand what the intervals sound like is the fact that it's going to help you to remember music, it's going to help you to write music, it's going to help you, if you're a singer, to be able to judge if you're singing in a rehearsal and there's no accompaniment tape or no, uh, D, no uh, CD to go by, so you're rehearsing maybe on your own without anything to help you. It'll show you where your next note is, how far up, how far below, and all of that. And that's something that anyone who's a singer has to know. They have to know it in their mind. Because they, it, with an instrument, it'll do it automatically as you finger the notes correctly. But a singer doesn't have that option. So there's lots of reasons. And I kind of stumbled on it in terms of helping you to write music if you're interested in that. And I'm not trying to turn you into music writers. But if you are interested in that, it's a way that I stumbled on to help you to learn and to create melodies. Because if you know the intervals, you can start on a note, go up a few, go up a third, go up a fifth, go up a seventh, whatever it is you want to do, and create melodies that way. So I, as I said, I st kind of stumbled upon it. I've never seen anyone teach it, but I'm teaching it because I think it might be helpful. So it's in a sense my own design. So I want to take a look at this piano keyboard, this chart I have. We're just going to concentrate on the bottom. I do have a lot of writing on the top, but I don't want to pay you to pay attention on that. But in the intervals, like for example, from a half step up to an octave, let's see what it looks like on the keyboard. So I'm going to start maybe with uh, this C right here. This is a C. A half step is going to be this this black note. The sharps and the flats are usually black notes. Not in all cases, but in most cases. This is going to be a half step. This is going to be a whole step. This is going to be a third, one, two, three. And if you use this as the bass note, as the beginning note, this will be the fourth. This will be the fifth. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Then the sixth and then the seventh, and then the eighth. Those are the intervals. And they keep repeating themselves because it's an octave. When you start, like, for example, at this C, this is an octave, and this is an octave. But you can go from a half step to up to an octave as intervals. As a matter of fact, you could go even more further than that. I could go from this C to this E, and then you've got a tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, 14, 15. So there it goes. So you can have as much as you want. If I'm to play it, and I'm going to use my little keyboard, it's hard to show because I have to put it on my lap to show it to you. But for example, if I do the C, I'll do it an octave higher. I think it's louder. C. Now that half step, that doesn't sound very good. Or it doesn't sound very good, but those are the half steps, and you can actually, it is an interval, it's a half step interval, you can actually write music to it. This is a full step. This is a third, sounds pretty good. Fourth. And you can work all the way. Some of them sound better than others. And you can work it down the scale as well. This is a good little keyboard because it's a Casio. It's always in pitch. I've had it for a number of years. I had another one, but it quit on me. These little keyboards are really handy to have if you're teaching music. But you have to remember that, that this one here only plays two notes at a time. You can't play a chord on it. A chord has to have three notes. You can't do that on this. But my little melodicas, can do a whole chord. So if I were to, and of course I have to put this in my mouth to play it. That's 
That's the seventh, and it doesn't sound very good. That's the octave. For a chord, you have to have at least three notes. So you can have more than that. You can have as many notes as you want to with a chord, but you have to have at least three or more. You can play, and with a chord, of course, you're playing them at the same time. Now, woodwinds can't play chords, so most people don't pay much attention to them. But what we do play is arpeggios. They're like a chord, but you play them one note at a time. You don't play them together. Notes that are played separately, if you could play them together, they'd be a chord. So this is a little German melodica, and I use it frequently, and it looks a little like a piano in the sense, whoops, I should do it this way, in the sense that you have your white keys down here, and then you ha have your series of two, three, two, three, two, which are basically your, your sharps and your flats. So in terms of getting back here, getting back here to the keyboard. Uh, so if I want to play, let's say, a third, this is a G and this is a B, that would be a third. G to C fourth, uh, G to D fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and you get to the octave. So these intervals are important in music because music uses them. We don't talk a lot about them. Nobody ever taught me about them, but I have stumbled onto it as a tool. So I'm going to stop playing, and it's going to be like with a half a step. So I'm going to take this down now, and we're going to get as far as we can in this session with music that I've written to demonstrate the steps. I want you to be able to, when you hear some notes, be able to figure it out. Is it a fourth? Is it a second? It'll just help you to remember the music. Now we're starting with a half a step. And uh, I will take and point this out to you before we begin, if we can focus here on this music. And uh, because a half a step will be that sharp, and I'm going to show you when it, OK, so this is the G. And this is the F. Now the F is sharp. That's a half a step right there. And that, that F sharp to the G is another half step. And I have that repeated. Down here, this is a B. This is a B flat. That's going to be a half step. And then from that B flat going back to the B, that's going to be another half step. Then that B to that D is going to be a triple. I mean, it's going to be a, a three steps, one, two, and three. And uh, so we'll start off. I, what I want to do with the music that I write is not intended to be great music, but it is intended to teach you what the steps are so when you hear them, you'd be able to recognize them. A half a step. This is an F sharp. This is three, four times. So basically, it's waltz time. It's a simple melody. You go from the G, which is a natural note, to the F sharp. And it's sharp because the sharp is in the key signature, back to that G, which which is another half a step. So uh, this will be like a third, this G to the B. This is a single step, B to A. A third when you get to the A to the, the F sharp. And you can kind of measure the music that way. Now I'm going to play this slow, because I want to dissect it for you. Uh, pay attention to the first three notes, because these are half steps. These are real half steps. So we'll go, and I'll, I'll play it, and I'm not going to play it fast. That's the whole song, and it's written to show half steps and whole steps, but basically half steps. So let me go over this once again if we look at the music here. G to F sharp, 
Now I'm playing this F sharp. I'll show you how I'm playing it. G is three fingers down with the thumb hole covered. This is a G. Where's the F sharp? It's the second note down on the right hand. You skip this one. If I played this one, you'd have an F. Or if it's a Baroque instrument, You notice that on a Baroque instrument, which this is, then I need to put that, sec that second finger down. I skip this one, and I put this one down for the F. That makes the pitch a little bit more realistic, a little bit better. But it doesn't matter. On a German instrument, you just use the one finger. But if you want the F sharp, you've got to lift this finger up and not use it and put the second finger down instead. <laughs> and you see, that's why, the way that I'm doing it in order to get this half step. So remember, one half step is just half of a full step. Here's a G. If I want a G sharp, that's going to be a half a step. I can lift this finger up, this G finger up, and put these two down, and I've got that G sharp. There's also a way of doing it by half holding that G. lifting this finger and so only half of the hole gets actually covered. Now actually this is the better fingering, but in a pinch, depending upon what you're playing, you can use the half holding. If I'm playing something that's very complicated, if I'm playing something that has lots of accidentals, it may be in my best interest to use an alternate fingering, which as long as it's secure and it pitches right, it can be much easier to play. What about the B? Here's a B. What, what do I want if I want a B flat? If I put this finger down too, it makes it a little bit more flatter, a little tiny bit dif of difference, but not much. This one needs to go down. Sometimes these go down too. So there are different ways of fingering that you can use, but that's a half step. You need to remember that a sharp is one half step up and a flat is one half step down. So if I play That's all a chromatic scale. A diatonic scale is when you go step by step, but as I described in the pattern I described, you can go half steps and full steps to get it. That would be a, di that would be a diatonic scale. That would be the chromatic scale, all done in half steps. So this song is to teach you half steps, to recognize half steps when you see it. And when you play it on a piano keyboard or something, then you will be able to easily tell. If I take my little melodica here, those are all half steps. Full steps, 
half step. So you can tell just by listening when you when you hear something. I've got to the point where I can hear a piece of music I don't know, and I can tell you what notes are sharp and what notes are flatted. I can just tell. I just know. But in order to do that, you have to be so familiar with music, and you have to listen a lot, and it kind of comes to you what it is. I don't have perfect pitch. And by the way, people who have perfect pitch, they usually wish that they hadn't because it's an irritation to them because a lot of times people will sing slightly off key and if they have perfect pitch they know what it should be because the body's telling what it should be and yet the person is a little bit off and it just grates on them. There are some bands that deliberately pitch the instruments like a half a step up. My sister has a piano in her church that has been pitched slightly off pitch deliberately and and she's playing organ to it the organ's perfect pitch but the piano is slightly pitched higher just by a few vibrations it's not even a half a step because if it was ha half a step it would be glaringly off but just a few little vibrations and there's a reason for that and the reason is that you get the vibrations moving a little bit faster if you pitch it up a little bit and that makes the music more brilliant but the problem is if an instrument is perfect pitch it's it's going to be obvious, at least to some people, that something's not quite on pitch, and it's going to be the instrument that has been pitched a little bit wrong. It's also harder on the strings because there's more tension on the strings. So it's just something to consider. I've known of whole orchestras who pitch all of their instruments slightly off, but it's always higher. It's never lower. It's a few vibrations faster, and so it's higher pitched because it gives more brilliance to the music, but it's not entirely accurate. So let me play this again. And you, if you pay attention, his one half step here, anytime you have that G to that F sharp is going to be a half step. And that F sharp to D to E uh, will be a, a, a pretty much a full step. This is going to be a half step. That B to B flat is a half step. That B flat back to B, those are accidentals. You have to, if you want that as a B flat, which I did, that's a half step. And I have to mark it in because it's not in the key signature. That becomes an accidental and it's a half step. But that goes for a full measure. So if I want to get it back to the B natural, which it would be normally because it's not mentioned in the key signature, it's not put in the key signature, it becomes another accidental and I have to mark it as natural, even though it's natural in the key signature because there's nothing in the key signature about it. So you have one half step here, one half step here, then you get to that D, that's a third, B natural to D is going to be a third, then this is going to be one step. D, C, B, A, G, and here again, a half a step because that F is going to be sharp because it's sharped in the key signature. Now, when you get used to things like that, it doesn't bother you. You just play it, and you're not even half aware of it because it's just so natural for you. This is in the key of G because there's an F sharp there, and it's a fairly easy key to play. I think it may even be a little easier than the C because if you have it in the key of C, you don't have any shops and flats, and that means you've got to securely get that little figure down for that low C, which has two little holes, not one, but in many instruments, two, though not in all instruments, and it'll still play the note right. But, you know, if you have trouble with your hands, if you don't have a big finger stretch, if a person is a child and, this, and their fingers don't stretch, if they have arthritis or something, it's hard sometimes to get the lower notes on these instruments because of the stretch. It's not a big stretch, but in, in certain circumstances it may be too much for a beginner or too much for anyone who has arthritis or has a hand problem or whatever the, the, their problem is. So it's easier to start on this low D 
and uh, instead of the C and use the G sharp, which is not a hard note to get, and then the D becomes pretty much the lowest note. Now this may be gobbledygook to you, but I'm going to explain all of this stuff as we go along. So let me play this again and see if you can check what the half notes really are. And I'll play it a little faster. Now that's a song, and I wrote it specifically for the purpose of showing half steps and full steps, but particularly the half steps. So if you can remember, a half step is just half of a full step. And if I put this, um, if I put uh, this keyboard back up again just for you to see it, This G was right here. This F sharp was right here. That was your half step. And that was the first notes of the song. F sharp, F, I mean F, and this is a G, F sharp, G, A, B. G, F sharp, G, B, A, F sharp, G, F sharp, half step, and then that E is a full step because you're not going from here to here, which would be a half step, you're going here to here, and then that D was the lowest note, which was a full step. So here we have a song that's basically half steps and full steps to teach you how to recognize it. Now I'm gonna go through this step by step by step, and so I'm go I think what I'll do probably is close it here because I wanna go uh, to uh, a full step, and I don't have time really to explain all of it, in the time that we have left. So we will close it here and just try to remember what the half steps are. And any note can have a half step. This F to E is gonna be a half step. That D to C sharp is gonna be a half step. That C to C sharp there is gonna be a half step. There are some of the notes can, that can be both flats and sharps depending upon how you write them and they are called enharmonic notes. So if you have have this G and you want a G sharp, you go up a half a step. Well, if you have an A and you want that A flatted, it goes down a half a step. That A flat is the same note as this G sharp. So that note is an enharmonic note, A flat or G sharp. You end on the same note. So what's the difference? It just depends upon what you're writing or what you're playing and the notes that come before that half step, what they are. Because because if you're going down, it's going to be a flat. If you're going up, it's going to be a sharp. Well, I'll close it here, and we'll get into more of this so you'll understand it better. So please join me next time.